So hi, my name is Robin. I'm the research director at Crime Research Group, and joining us from Crime Victim Services is Amara Rivera Vasquez, uh, who is the new grant manager, and we welcome her. Um, so this project actually originated from the people we will be um, kind of talking to. Um, the Center for Crime Victim Services has set up a, a program to provide wraparound legal services for uh, victims of crime. So this can include anything from um, RFA, uh, restraining orders in domestic abuse cases. It can include divorce. It can include eviction. Um, whatever victims need, uh, a group, um, a statewide group seeks to provide those services. So the services come in two, um, two tiers, kind of. The first is crime victim services um, helps staff what we call the law line, which is anyone can call and um, say, I've got this issue, what kind of attorney do I need or can you recommend an attorney? And so if a caller identifies as a victim of a crime, um, that gets entered into their database and um, that kind of service is funded by um, the grants that CCBS manages. The, and this also, um, our local bar association also um, does that type of service of referring out to other attorneys. And then there are attorneys across the state, uh, legal aid um, uh, associated with our, uh, people associated with our network for domestic and sexual violence, disability rights, et cetera, who uh, also provide one-on-one uh, -on -one legal services for victims of crime. And the attorneys that participate in these levels of service um, want to be evaluated. They do not feel that the data that they are required to capture actually captures the kinds of services and outcomes that they want. So they asked for this, which is great. Um, and that's what we're going to do is we are going to talk through with them about how they would like to be um, evaluated and what they are um, currently uh, collecting for data. And that's going to involve me going around to various offices and sitting and seeing what their kind of case management systems look like so we can see what we can already extract from the data that they are collecting um, instead of there was a huge please don't ask us to, you know, fill out another spreadsheet or something of data. Um, you know, so how can we work with the systems that the attorneys are already using um, to extract information that can be used in, in performance measures and outcomes? And then we will follow our legislat legislators' um, request, which is um, they use results-based accountability, uh, which is a method of um, well, pretty much any time you testify about a program, you have to use this here in Vermont. And it asks some basic questions. Um, what did we do? How well did we do it? Is anyone better off? Um, and so we will help uh, CCVS and the legal services team kind of come up so that they can answer those questions, um, in, you know, so that it's accepted statewide, and then also do the traditional logic model um, about the data and the services they provide and the outcomes that they're looking to measure. Um, and just, you know, um, in the discussions, we've had a brief discussion uh, when we were just getting started with the project, and um, they don't want to be measured based on their wins because that's beyond their control. Um, and so they've come up with some really interesting ways that they think they would like to be measured um, dealing with client satisfaction. Um, does the client feel that they have, you know, been represented well or had their had a fair hearing in court or whatever the services were needed? So it's really exciting um, and a way to kind of um, get the legal community involved uh, and then set them up properly for an evaluation later on down the line. And Amara, I don't know if you wanted to add anything. Hello, no, not at this moment, and can you hear me? Yep. yep. Oh, hello, no, not at this moment, but thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Robin and Amara. Yep. Does anyone have any questions for the Vermont team about their project? 
you can feel free to enter them into the chat box, um, sending to all participants, or chime in verbally. Hey, hey, Bailey. Yeah, George, go ahead. Uh, if if we were, as Elizabeth uh, kind of was getting at with some of her questions, we're interested in uh, doing kind of a, a deeper dive with uh, our colleagues in Iowa, how would you suggest we go about doing that, other than just calling them up? Is, is that <laughs> probably the best way to, to go? Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to send out an attendee list. Uh, with contact yeah. information after yeah. this meeting, uh, so we could go about it that way. Um, yeah. I can also, uh, you know, help connect you guys. We could set okay. up, you know, more of a formal meeting. Um, yeah. But yeah, it definitely sounds like it would be very valuable for for you guys to talk and to share, um, you okay. know, what you're learning and what your different approaches are. Yeah, I mean, uh, when uh, I mean we. Uh, I think we could learn a lot from one another uh, on, you know, our two projects. They're they're so similar. And I, I mean, I talked with Sarah briefly about the project, our, our project, and her project when we saw each other down at the Eastern Regional Training uh, in Atlanta back in December. So, anyways, blah blah. Yeah, you know, we really want, you know, the, these partnerships and the Center for Victim Research. We really want it to be, you know, a community of sharing information and about, you know, research and the practitioner side. So, you know, any way that we can help facilitate that between our partnerships. And of course, we're sharing information about your partnerships on our website. So we really want it to be um, out there and for people to learn. So we did have um, a question come in for you, Robin, um, in Vermont. So curious to know about um, the progress that you've made on your project so far. I know you said that you had um, started to have meetings and talk about uh, how to measure progress. Sure. Um, so we yeah, did the IRB uh, process, and um, there were, came back a little um, some suggestions that I just have to change, and I. The next, we've had um, some exploratory conversations, and the next step is a meeting in March um, where we're going to sit down uh, and really hash this out, and then I will be going around to the various agencies and checking out their data collection systems, and, um, and then we will do the processing of that with the, age, with, another, with the group at their quarterly meeting in the summer. Okay, great. We had sure. another question come in asking about um, if there's any sort of speculation about the types of data partnering lawyers are currently collecting. Um, no, I am digging back into my own past as a prior lawyer and remembering the the um, the software that I used to use a long time ago. Um, about how you know how much contact I had with a, with a client, um, the nature of the contact, et cetera. So a lot of the case, a lot of the legal software that these agencies are using is pretty similar, um, and so it's just a question of um, going in and really seeing what everyone is is keeping track of across the board. Great, thank you, Robin. Yep. If anyone else uh, has questions for Vermont, or we'll go ahead and open it up for any of the states, uh, you can chime in verbally or enter in a chat message. I'll go ahead and unmute the lines. Um, I may have to remute some of them uh, as I've had to do here, so I'm, I'll go ahead. And so, if anyone um, on the Phone then has any questions for any of the teams? Go ahead and let us know. So
So Misty and the Idaho team, um, I did have a question for you guys. Uh, it's really exciting to see that you've already you know, been able to put together your interactive Tableau dashboard there. Um, is that something that, do you know if users are already using that or is that sort of been keeping internally so far and something you anticipate uh, sharing and who do you anticipate utilizing uh, that software? Sorry, Misty, if you're um, speaking, we cannot hear you. Oh, I'm not sure if you if you are or not, but um, I think you might be muted if you were um, going to respond there. There we go. I was muted again. There you go. <laughs> okay, so it is on a actual web page, but we have no links to it because it's just our testing site right now. Um, we need to add more data, change some layout that kind of thing. We do plan to have it on our website um, and offer it to um, the council's website as well if they wish to have it there. Great, and are users able to download the data behind the dashboard as well? Or are they able to download it in like an Excel file or anything like that? Uh, we have not decided um, if we're going to allow that option. Most of the stuff is public information, so it wouldn't be a problem um, allowing that. I think it's really helpful, um, you know, to kind of be able to visualize um, that information. And, you know, we kind of are in a more and more visual world, so I think it would be, yeah, useful to users, certainly. This is Sarah Finneran. I have a real quick question for Maine. Um, in your opinion, how, how easy was it to learn Tableau? How easy was it to learn um, the map development? Uh, did you guys do that yourself? Did you do that in-house or did you contract that out? Um, I, missed, I missed one part of your question. How easy was it to learn the what, Sarah? Uh, ta Tableau. Oh, you know, Sarah, I, I, we're not using Tableau. I think that you you may be thinking of Misty. We're we're not doing that as part of our work in Maine. I'm I'm sorry, the the Idaho. I'm sorry. Um, so Misty, that's back at you. Sorry, um, I accidentally hit a. The disconnect button. So I missed the last part of what you said, Bailey. Oh, uh, Sarah from Iowa has a question for you here. Go ahead, Sarah. We love maps. We think they're super cool. We'd like to get them to be a little bit interactive. So um, I'm just I'm interested in the maps that you developed. Um, did you do that in house or did you contract that out? And how easy was it? It's it's an in in-house um, and it's free. We use the Tableau Public software, and it's it's easy. It's pretty easy to um, teach yourself how to use it. There's a learning curve. Yeah, there's a learning yeah. curve. It's not as intuitive as you would expect if you're an Excel user, but you figure it out. This is Robin from Vermont. We use Tableau a lot, um, and it was pretty easy for us to. It was we 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 bought we don't do the server version we bought the regular version the desktop version. Um, if you've got good geo codes, it's great. Um, if you're using the state plane system, you're going to have to find a way to convert those codes over. Um, it doesn't convert just regular street addresses. You need to find a you know so you don't have the geo codes, you'll have to find a way to batch convert those. Um, but it will do counties, you know, uh, zip code levels, census blocks at some point, you know, and there's lots of overlays that you can do. So it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful. And we find that our stakeholders really like interacting with the stuff that we do put up on the web um, because it is so interactive. 
And there are a lot of Tableau videos out there as well. To yeah. Like, to help learn it. That's great. Well, you guys have boosted my confidence. Thank you. Yeah, this is Roger. Um, I wanted to just jump in on something too. Um, we had done, JRSA had done um, a couple of different things around training for Tableau, and there is a uh, webinar that's archived on our website uh, on the use of Tableau. Uh, if you if you go on the website um, and go into the resources section, you should be able to find the um, archive of the webinar that's there. And um, we also, uh, for the SACs, uh, do have a, a program that's called the Mutual Assistance Program where we can link up um, different SACs or SAC directors or other resources to help you to be able to uh, build some capacity in an area like using Tableau. So um, li listening to the conversations here, clearly um, there are folks that are involved in this project that have experience using it. And um, I just, we could, you know, in some way, if there is a, a, an, an interest on your part or a need, um, we could probably, you know, provide some assistance, maybe link you up with folks to uh, get a handle on the software and how to use it. And I'd encourage you to go back into our website and take a look at that archived webinar as well. That's great. Thank you, guys. Uh, you know, another resource is, you know, some SACs are using uh, Power BI, which is another kind of uh, uh, program similar to Tableau. I know that Jeff Zuback out of Maryland uh, is a big uh, fan of Power BI, and at the Eastern Regional Training, uh, you know, he did a demo of that program. Uh, and uh, Jeff is very enthusiastic about it, and so if you call him up, you'll you'll hear a lot about it. Okay, great, everyone. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or comments for any of our state presenters? Okay, um, I don't see any other chat messages or questions, so I think we're going to go ahead and move on.